are you doing? Taking my picture? Yep. Oh, picture. don't do that, huh? <laughs> and mom and dad bought it. They've had it for almost a hundred years. They bought it in, in 1925. Mom and dad married 1926. Joe Stinson was born over here in 1927. I was born November the 9th, 1931. A long time ago. It was really a country. Yeah. I had it rough being. Women don't appreciate what they have nowadays. Yeah. They fuss cause they have to do this and they have to do that. But boy, they are lucky cause they didn't have to do it what I done. <laughs> I was working, taking care of mom and taking care of your daddy. Yeah. When my mom, dad died, she donated that to Joe Stinson, and Joe Stinson willed it to John. I married when I was 16. And we moved to Brownsford Road. He was keeping all the money and things on that property over there, and I was doing it all over here. And I told him, one of these places has got to go. We can't keep this up. So the next day, a week, he'd come over here and start this shed. about 1920 because Mr. and Miss Kenny built two. They had two daughters, Elsie and Jenny, I think was her name. She kept having the sore throat. So old doctor was taking her tonsils out on the operating table in his house up at Samsonia and he accidentally cut the artery and she bled to death right there in that house. Wow. So is it haunted? Huh? Is it haunted? No. <laughs> you said you picked strawberries, but you also sold them, too? Oh, yeah, we took them to the market. See, they used to have a strawberry festival in Paducah. And there's a lot of history to this, this area right here. I've got it all down as much as I can get it down. Daddy's parents, Casper and Louisa Jane, come from North Carolina to Kentucky in an ox cart. Mm -hmm. And John Copeland was already over here. He's from England. There's a Copeland Castle over there. Casper Smith was in the Union Army, and Grandpa Copeland's daddy, Jacob Copeland, was in the Confederate Army. Don't you know that made for a good relationship in that family? <laughs> Oki Jean come to see me. She said, get your good clothes on, let's go to Benton to the archives. So I got changed and I told Clifton, I said, I'm going to Benton with Oki Jean. He never did answer me. So she got up there and she was, looking up the senses on the Edwards. And I thought, well, while she's doing that, I'll look up on Grandpa Copeland. 
My grandfather Copeland had all these, had all these brothers and sisters I knew nothing about. And I wasn't born until 1931. He was born in 1863. Granny has roughly six and a half acres. Her will basically states that things, any proceeds get split evenly. People is to take what they want and everything else is to be sold and it's to be divided equally. Now that doesn't mean you split the rest of the land evenly, it's been plotted off. She has split the six and a half acres into three different plots, roughly one for each son. Between Gary. Has an old barn, has an old house, <clears throat> has a, an older, very small house. And JC. Her plot at the moment. It has a decent sized shop on it. Has a house that's over 2,000 square feet, four bedrooms. And Brad and Justin and Aiden gets Randy's part. That one used to be where dad's, uh, dad lived. This is the spot where I last saw my grandfather before he died. Last time I saw Randy Earl Wallace before he died, we were burning a bunch of wood. Well, that dollar amount that you would potentially sell and split three ways uh, gets smaller if someone buys those existing plots of land. But more than anything, we're just trying to keep the entire land together in some way even if it's owned by different family members it's at least still together supposedly when you get old the most economical method to not put a lot of burden on your family when you die is to sign it over to them and then you get on medicaid once you're on medicaid you're old you you're basically taken care of her three sons were trying to get her to sign everything over to them and they were working on that. And so uh, I guess the plan kind of fell through. So even now my grandmother still has, you know, property and, and assets under her name. And therefore she can't um, get on Medicaid. She still has to, at 92, take care of herself. And she still lives alone in a fairly large house. She's nothing but a cheap casino girl. He's right. I've done it all, everything. Everything but lie. Granny had fallen in the hallway because her body was trying to fight this infection for a long time. She has no idea how long she had it and it just became too much. So her blood pressure dropped and she passed out. It took Gary about 10 hours or so before he could pick her up and they had to give her antibiotics to try to get rid of that infection. It took a while, but luckily they were able to do that. I think she's off of the antibiotics now, but she still takes a bunch of other things. It is starting to become difficult to manage all those expenses on her own with only her social security and no other form of income. She's basically also ran out of her savings. So she's at a point where she's kind of outlived her, her savings and we're very soon gonna have to figure out ways to, to help her if she's gonna continue living you know, on her own. If we lose this land and can't go back to the old house, this family will experience many heartaches. At least our history will remain in these notes, like keeping time in a bottle. <laughs>